Thank you. Cool talk so far. Um, like my son Harvey here, um, we all love to explore and we all love to ask questions. We're all scientists under the skin. It's just a lot of us have been educated out of this view. Open science is the idea that anyone can get involved because everything is freely available and open on the web. I work on a, on a disease called schistosomiasis, a neglected tropical disease that affects about half a billion people around the world. It's a big problem. It's a parasite that lives in your blood and it does very bad things to you. It's a neglected tropical disease, meaning there's very little funding for it, given the amount of suffering it causes. There's a great drug, praziquantel. This is a chemical structure for the, for the drug. It's a, synthet a synthetic compound that is made by, uh, on a ton scale by a company in South Korea called Shinpung, distributed by the Gates Foundation, WHO, uh, via the Schistosomiasis Control Initiative in, in Imperial College in London. It has a feature. Uh, it's asymmetric. Its mirror image doesn't superimpose back on itself. Like your hands, they're the same, but not. Limonines like this, one smells of lemons, one smells of oranges, they're mirror images. This is my wife, she's symmetric, which is why she's so, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Parasoquantal has this feature. Generally, it's easier to make symmetric things, like bowls and mugs and stuff. By the time you get to this Rodin sculpture, which is asymmetric, it gets expensive. This is a problem with molecules if you're going to make things cheaply, for neglected tropical diseases, for example. The thing about organic chemistry is that we can make any molecule you want for a price, anything you want. This is mitotoxin, a very complicated molecule it's being made by a lab in the States. The problem is the price. We can make it, but the cost is a problem. For schisto, we want this drug, Prozacuanta, for a low price. Uh, it has this feature of asymmetry. We want, we've got the thing on the top. We want the thing on the bottom left. We don't want the thing on the bottom right. How do we do that and keep the price down? Well, we need to be able to solve this problem if we're any good at anything. How do you solve problems like this? You either work in academia, like this, where you have a cathedral model, right? Software guys should know about this. Where everything works beautifully and someone's in charge and there's artisans who are highly trained and things. Or you do the bizarre model where anyone can come along and it's a bit chaotic and smells a little bit, but it gets things done. I think we need the bottom thing. Science does things on the left. Uh, long processes of peer review and people reproducing other people's work and it's, it's lengthy and costs a lot of money. I think we need the thing on the right where everyone works at the same time, on the web, gets things done cheaply openly. Now there's some things about this which are tricky. Uh, this is the basic cycle. You post a problem on the web, you post kernel data. People reveal holes in your approach and you ask the community for input. Uh, the community provides detail about how you might improve it and then someone in charge prunes it. This is just the open cycle. Pretty, pretty clear and pretty obvious. So to, um, to do this you have to post data, kernel data. We did this. This paper up on the top here and, and Glaxo have recently done this with malaria data. Posting data. This is step one, though. You want to collaborate on the web. You want to work with people, not just post data. So open science is an active process of collaboration on the web. We started a website called the Synaptic Leap, where we posted our initial data for free for everyone to see. And we got a kind of trickle of interest, like this great suggestion by a colleague of mine on the bottom, Craig Williams in Queensland, who suggested something. But what really changed our project was we were funded by the Australian government and the World Health Organization to do this project. And now what we're doing is posting a lot of raw data on the web, on this website on the bottom. Every experiment we do is, is, uh, is, is uh, revealed for, for free on the web, and this reaction that we're doing on the top is the cool thing we're doing at the moment. What's amazing about this project really is we've had companies donate things to an open, open project. Companies becoming involved. Isn't that surprising? Maybe not, because they're able to showcase their expertise without fear of, uh, of, of client confidentiality. So it's been, a, it's, it's been a wonderful journey to have that happening. Why, why would you do science in this way? Well, one big thing, of course, is it's transparent. You can re-engage the public by doing science this way. Uh, it, it's a great thing to re-engage their trust um, because they're funding the science, right? They should be able to see what's going on. Another big advantage of doing open science like this is that if somebody dies or if the money runs out or something, they can be replaced like a starfish. You lop off one of those arms and it just regrows. Everything is on the web, so it always carries on no matter what happens to the project. The big advantage of open science, though, is speed. Open science is, is fast. Experts can identify themselves and help you out in whatever you want to do. I don't think in the future that traditional science in closed labs is going to be able to compete with open science for speed uh, once it gets established. What we've learned in the last few years of doing this is that you need to post stuff on the web for people to get their teeth stuck into. You have to post kernel data. You can't just ask people for help and expect a reply. You've got to post data for people to get their, their teeth stuck into. That's crucial. Uh, and it's something that we're addressing right now. 
Now, in the future, uh, I guess the thing that we really need is a way of collaborating with people on the web and experimental sciences. That's really hard. We need a killer application, an electronic lab book that allows collaboration to happen just as easy as you were uh, talking to someone in a lab or something. Where are we going with this? Well, we're right at the start. So we need to move beyond philanthropy into, into science in more, in more general areas. We need to show the funding agencies that science like this can leverage funding uh, from a small amount of money to a large amount of effort. And really, we need you guys, the public and everybody else, to get involved and release your inner geek. Thanks. <laughs>